Welcome to Sketchy. We take all the super complex stuff you need to learn and turn it into memorable visual stories packed full of everything you need to know on test day. But like any good scientist knows, the best way to find out is to try for yourself, which you can do for free, like right now. So let's get to it. The Interplanetary Space Station, a not so humble abode for astronauts that need some space and the first destination for this chapter covering cell cycle and division. So, let me tell you everything you need to know about the cell cycle. The cell cycle is a series of events where a eukaryotic cell grows, replicates its genome, and then undergoes division. The cell cycle has two main parts, interphase and the mitotic, or M phase. A cell spends most of its life in interphase. Interphase is further divided into G1, S, and G2. And this interplanetary space station is fully equipped with a brand spanking new gym, a factory for synthesizing new information, a greenhouse, and of course, a pod multiplier. Because no space station is complete without a pod multiplier. All right, let's take a tour of the facilities. Here at the gym is where nerds like myself get swole. G1 the first gap, or growth phase, is essentially a gym for cells. G1 is usually the longest stage of the cell cycle. In G1, the cell ramps up protein synthesis while increasing its size and number of organelles to prepare for DNA replication. Onto the synthesizer room. This is where new information gets synthesized. Okay, we don't actually know what goes down here, but... Let these duplicate sets of wires remind you that a cell doubles its chromosomes during the S phase. The final part of interphase is G2, also called the second gap or growth stage. And what better place to illustrate that than by this greenhouse? Check out these growing plants. That guy from that book about being stuck on Mars would be proud. Anyways, in G2, a cell continues to grow in size while preparing for mitosis and cell division. And we're off to the multiplier. This is where the space pods get built. Remember that during the M phase, a cell goes through nuclear and cytoplasmic division, creating two daughter cells that share the same number of chromosomes. See our video on mitosis for a whole lot more about this. So, the cell has completed a full cycle, but you're probably wondering what happens to cells that don't normally divide. Well, from G1, they can enter G0, a dormant phase in which cells are metabolically active but slow down protein synthesis, don't grow, duplicate, or divide. To show that, we drew a go-to-sleep pod for our astronauts. Okay, so there are some cells that can stay dormant. For example, permanent cells like erythrocytes, neurons, skeletal, and cardiac muscle are completely differentiated and therefore remain in G0. Then, there are the stable cells, such as hepatocytes, lymphocytes, the periosteum, and proximal convoluted tubule cells found in the kidneys. They can enter and exit G0. In contrast, labile cells such as enterocytes, skin, hair follicles, and germ cells never go into G0 because they have high turnover rates. Okay, let's change gears and talk about cell cycle regulation. There are three important checkpoints in a cell's life, G1, G2, and the metaphase checkpoint. The G1 checkpoint is present at the end of G1. The goal is making sure the cell has grown enough in size and has all the necessary components for DNA synthesis. And here's Billy showing off the guns. Dang, Billy, stop hogging the mirror. This process is regulated by specific growth factors such as insulin, platelet-derived growth factor, epidermal growth factor, and erythropoietin. They specifically bind to tyrosine kinase receptors, allowing the cell to enter the S phase. All right, one checkpoint down, two more to go. The G2 checkpoint comes at the end of G2. It makes sure the cell has grown sufficiently and replicated all the organelles to support two daughter cells in preparation for mitosis. Last but certainly not least is the metaphase checkpoint, also called the spindle checkpoint. This occurs at the end of metaphase. It makes sure that each chromosome is properly attached to the spindle and lined up at the metaphase plate. Yep, these space pods look ready to go.
Now that we've covered all the checkpoints, let's take a look at how this process is regulated at the molecular level. The main players are cyclins, cyclin-dependent kinases, CDKs, and tumor suppressor proteins. Cyclins are a group of proteins that control progression of the cell through the cell cycle. They're called cyclins because their concentrations fluctuate in a cyclical pattern depending on where we are in the cell cycle. Then there are the CDKs. There are different kinds of CDKs and they are continuously expressed. CDKs specifically bind to cyclins, generating activated cyclin CDK complexes. This is depicted by the robot on cycling wheels, inserting a set of P batteries into the slot to open the door. So these cyclin CDK complexes alter downstream proteins via phosphorylation, which, in turn, allow the cell to move from one stage to the next. We can't finish talking about cell cycle regulation without mentioning P53, that major tumor suppressor protein that's been dubbed the guardian of the genome. Yep, that one. P53 controls the G1 and G2 checkpoint by making sure that cells have grown enough in size and have the necessary components for DNA synthesis and mitosis. Not only can P53 activate DNA repair proteins after DNA damage has occurred, it can initiate apoptosis when DNA damage is deemed irreversible. Okay, so let's review a major pathway involving P53. At the end of G1, if cells have not achieved a critical size to replicate DNA, P53 will lead to induction of P21. And illustrated here is a private. For those who are unfamiliar, a private is a soldier of the lowest military rank. Yep, almost as low as a third year medical student in the hospital. Almost. Anyways, looks like the police is instructing our private to turn him off. Turn what off, Mr. Officer, sir? Oh, it's that cycling wheel robot. That's because P21 shuts down CDK, and that activates another tumor suppressor protein called RB to prevent the cell from entering the S phase. And here's a literal roadblock to remind you of RB. Uh-oh. Looks like this cell's going nowhere. So, to recap, P53 induces P21, which in turn inhibits CDK. This allows for the activation of a tumor suppressor called RB that blocks cell cycle progression. As you probably know, mutations in tumor suppressor genes result in uncontrolled cell proliferation, leading to cancer. That means that a mutation in the pathway above, like for instance in the P53 gene, can lead to loss of cell cycle regulation. I knew that cop was crabby. Time to get out of here, but first, a short outro. The cell cycle is divided into interphase and the mitotic, or M, phase. Interphase consists of G1, S, and G2. Cells grow in G1 before replicating their DNA in S, and grow again in G2 before dividing in M. There are three major cell cycle checkpoints, G1, G2, and the metaphase checkpoint. The cell cycle is closely regulated by cyclins, CDKs, and tumor suppressor proteins. Mutations in tumor suppressor proteins result in uncontrolled cell proliferation, leading to cancer development. Enjoy this lesson? Want to see more? Let us know by using the link in the description below.